Do you know how Twitter handles the 500 million tweets uploaded every day? And Thread was able to handle around 30 million users on the first day? Maybe you are thinking that Thread is built on top of Instagram's tech stack? Then you are right. But there are slight changes. Behind every tweet and thread, there's a complex ecosystem of technologies working in perfect synchronization. Understanding these architectural choices offers a glimpse into how modern tech giants manage unprecedented user engagement. So let's start with the back end. But before we start, I want to mention that Twitter has built many open source projects for their own use. And these open source projects are very useful for us as well. So we will look at these in the last section. Uh, now talking about backend. Source across the web says that Node.js has used Twitter as a backend language with Express.js, but when I have looked into Twitter's GitHub page, it shows Scala as the, uh, Scala as the top language, so I'm not very sure. And also, there is not much information available about backend technology on Twitter's official website. So I have done some digging on Twitter's GitHub page, which divides Twitter backend in three parts. First is Node.js, which is used for its real-time features like live updates, notifications, and the rapid delivery of tweets to users. Scala is used for data handling and processing, and Java is used for building microservices. Java is used for the same purpose by many big companies like Netflix, Amazon, Google, Uber, Spotify, and Microsoft. Therefore, in my opinion, learning Java is hard, but rewarding. Enough for Twitter, now let's move to Thread's backend technology. Threads uses Django as a backend, which is a high-level Python web framework, and Flask is used for microservices. The main purpose behind using Flask is that Flask is lightweight and also a Python-based framework. But wait, they also use Java as well for some services and performance optimizations. Next is database technology, and that's where most beginners make the mistake of selecting one. So let's understand which and why of the database selection from this. Twitter started with MySQL, however, as the platform scaled, they also implemented custom solutions like Manhattan for real-time data handling with high availability and low latency needs. But Mark Zuckerberg already knew that his platform was going to grow. So from the start, he has implemented a custom-built database by Meta with PostgreSQL. And to make these database operations fast and cost-effective, both use caching with open-source in-memory data structure storing server Redis. You have likely seen that most companies use Redis for caching, so learning Redis will be a good move for career advancement, although it is very easy to learn Redis. It only requires one to two hours. Moving on to mobile apps, Twitter uses Kotlin for Android apps, and iOS apps are built using Swift. Most of Meta's mobile code base is built natively, but they do use React Native for smaller features. In some cases, teams use it to rapidly develop a new feature concept and ultimately go back and build it natively once it proves to be valuable or let's say worth the time and money. Maybe because when you are worth billions of dollars, you better take every little improvement. But how do they build half native and half React apps? That's where React Native bridging comes into play. It is a concept developed by the React team. The front end of the website is written in React.js for both of them. React is known for its blazing fast performance and has been used at scale by companies like Facebook, Instagram, and Netflix. Therefore, React.js is best out there for the front end. Currently, Twitter is running a total of 107 open source projects, which have some good projects. For example, Pants, which is a scalable build system for code bases containing multiple projects. Pants is built using Python and some part of it is written in Rust. One more small but powerful tool is PEX, a tool for generating .pex, which is Python executable files. Another great tool is Chill, which is Scala extensions for the cryo serialization library. These are just three examples. They have many very useful projects, which you can use in your projects to make them match industry standards. While threads do not have any open source projects running currently, but the parent company Meta has so many open source projects, but talking about them in this video does not make any sense. They use many other technologies like Pelican Cache, Twitter's unified cache backend, Aviary. The world's best photo editing SDK, Threads use Apache Spark, which is a fast and general engine for large scale data processing. They also use Redux, which is a state container. The next big social media platform could be built by someone who understands these technological principles and isn't afraid to innovate.